Hello. Thank you for taking the time to uh, listen in on our presentation of testing high-speed avionics, ethernet, and fiber channel switches. As avionics applications have increased in complexity and sophistication, they have required an ever-increasing amount of data bandwidth. And as a result, traditional bus technologies like MIL standard 1553, ARINC 429, and ARINC 629 are giving way to switched networks based on more commonly available technologies like Ethernet and Fiber Channel. With Ethernet and Fiber Channel types of networks used in avionics applications, these systems have evolved from shared buses and serial links, which are common with 1553 and ARINC 429, and they've evolved to switch networks where switches or hubs are at the core of the network and are the mass interconnect connecting all of the end nodes of the system. If we take a look at a comparison between some of the most common legacy data bus technologies as compared to the newer network-based approaches of Ethernet and Fiber Channel, we can see that not only has there been a shift from the use of serial interfaces or shared buses to, to switched star type networks, but that also Fiber Channel and Ethernet have introduced many more options and possibilities into these networks. For example, with Ethernet and ARINC 664, both optical and electrical interfaces are possible. This is also the same with Fiber Channel. And with both Ethernet and Fiber Channel, there are several options for the data bit bandwidth or the data bit rate used on the interconnects between the end nodes and the switches. For example, with Ethernet, from 10 megabit all the way up to 10 gigabit per second is currently possible. And with Fiber Channel in common avionics applications, anywhere from 1 gigabit to 4 gigabit can be found. Because network technologies such as Ethernet and Fiber Channel are based on a switch at the core of the network, they provide for simplified wiring and network connections within an aircraft system. End nodes are simply wired to the mass interconnect or the switch and are then able to communicate with any other node wired to that switch in the network. Switch networks also allow for more efficient use of the technology bandwidth when compared to a shared bus like 1553. With shared buses, only one node can communicate at any given time and therefore the total bandwidth provided by the network is set and only allowed to be used by one node at a time. With a switch network, individual data paths can be established through the switch between end nodes and therefore multiple pairs of end nodes can communicate simultaneously with each other and take full advantage of the bandwidth that's allowed on each link between the switch and the end node. Now let's talk a little bit about Fiber Channel as used in avionics systems. Fiber Channel was originally developed to support the storage area network market. Some of the typical characteristics of SAN networks are they're large networks with hundreds or even thousands of nodes. The networks are composed of equipment from multiple vendors, so equipment must be highly interoperable across vendors. There are dynamic environments where plug and play operations are very important. And in SAN networks, real time is measured in tens of milliseconds. For avionics adaptations of Fiber Channel, the environment is quite a bit different and as a result, the considerations for the supporting test equipment and test systems are also different. Avionics Fiber Channel networks can be characterized as follows. Smaller numbers of network nodes, usually tens or dozens nodes, fewer vendors of equipment attached to the networks, static configurations, so no plug and play is really required, and real time is measured much more tightly in tens of microseconds in avionics networks. One of the key and emerging adaptations of Fiber Channel for avionics is High Speed 1760. This protocol is defined in SAE specification MIL standard 1760E as the standardized interface to be used between a host aircraft and its attached stores, which may be auxiliary fuel tanks, sensors and cameras, or weapon systems. The development of the HS 1760 standard has been driven by the increasing complexity and data bandwidth demands of stores systems. Because MIL standard 1760E is a subsequent version of the legacy MIL standard 1760 interface standard, the fiber channel interfaces included have had to be adapted to existing physical interfaces available on existing aircraft. This most notably means that HS 1760 requires the use of electrical media instead of optical media for the fiber channel interfaces so that existing electrical pins and connections can be utilized. For high speed 1760, a 75 ohm copper interface is used which can support fiber channel signaling over up to 100 feet of cable with up to 5 disconnects. HS 1760 allows only the switched fabric or switched network topology of fiber channel. 
Additionally, HS1760 further simplifies this by only allowing a tree structure of network switches in the network backbone switching fabric. In this tree structure, a principal switch is located at the top of the tree. The principal switch uses an HS1760 specific protocol called Fast Fabric Initialization to distribute routing tables to the downstream switches at power-up. This allows a single configuration point in the network and the Fast Fabric Initialization allows for the entire system to come up quickly after power-up or restarts. Another commonly used adaptation of Fiber Channel for avionics applications is AirInc 818. AirInc 818 is a commercial aerospace specification which defines the use of Fiber Channel to carry video data streams within avionics systems. AirInc 818 allows only the point-to-point -to -point topology of Fiber Channel. However, in most real avionics systems, video streams are often routed through video switches to allow switching between multiple input streams at a display and to support splitting a single stream out to multiple displays. So, for AirInc 818 applications, there is typically some kind of fiber channel switching element at the core of the system which must be tested and verified. It is notable that a unique element of AirInc 818 is that it allows for the use of multiple possible fiber channel data rates to accommodate different video application needs. So, considering a couple of common adaptations of fiber channel, such as AirInc 818 and High Speed 1760, we can summarize some of the key considerations for testing the switches at the core of these networks. For AirInc 818, the wide range of possible network bit rates must be considered and supported by testing equipment. For High Speed 1760 weapons buses, support for the Fast Fabric Initialization Protocol must be considered. And, since AIRIC 818 uses optical interfaces and High Speed 1760 uses 75 ohm electrical interfaces, a test design must consider an implementation which provides flexible options for the physical media interfaces. A logical choice for a test system platform for avionic switches is PXI Express. First, PXI Express systems exist which can host up to 15 fiber channel test instruments. This allows for the construction of single chassis systems which can easily support all of the I.O. interfaces required to test a 24-port avionic switch when using fiber channel test instruments with at least two network interfaces per instrument. Additionally, PXI Express provides the timing and synchronization facilities required for the synchronization of the timestamping clocks of the test instruments. There are also readily available avionic-specific fiber channel and Ethernet test instruments. Because the fiber channel switches can provide either copper or optical network interfaces, it is important to select a test instrument which provides SFP-based fiber channel interfaces which allow for the switching between physical media by only swapping SFP media transceivers. Another key feature to consider for fiber channel test instruments is the ability to generate frame data on board as opposed to requiring host software to stream data over the system backplane to the instrument. For capacity tests, High rates of data must be generated on all network interfaces and this would swamp the test system backplane and host processor. So the test instrument must be intelligent enough to generate data patterns on board the test instrument. 